We're gonna be testing out five viral hacks to see if they actually work. For centuries, a problem has plagued humanity. How to not cry when cutting onions. I can already feel it. Onions release sulfuric acid. I'm already feeling it in my eyes. And that is what makes you cry. Oh, you shouldn't cut with your eyes closed. There's gotta be a better way. The internet is full of suggestions of what you should do, but I don't think this should be the solution to cutting onions. You might have also heard that a cold onion is less likely to make you cry. I put this onion in the freezer for a little bit, or you can pull a chilled onion from the refrigerator. Sharp knife is always a good idea. All right, there it goes a little bit, but it's not too bad. I mean, holding an onion that close to your eyes and I'm not really crying, cold onion might actually work. A viral hack that's been floating around to prevent that onion cutting suffer is to use a wet paper towel. Just set the wet paper towel right next to where you're cutting. The wet paper towel is supposed to attract all that sulfuric acid to the moisture in the paper towel instead of in your eyes. This might actually work. The paper towel is actually doing its job. I can smell the onion still and sense a little bit of it in my eye, but not as bad as it was when I just cut the onion by itself. It's also handy to keep a small bowl on the side for all your scraps. Preparing a meal doesn't have to be emotional. Save your tears when cutting onions. No more drama from these onions, but what are we gonna do about garlic? Garlic is so good to cook with, but why's it gotta be such a pain to work with? And if you're like me in the kitchen, you wanna get things done quick and tedious tasks like this, just don't seem worth it. And then you're just left with all this mess. Let's avoid this mess and try a technique that uses the microwave instead. All you need is a whole head of garlic in the microwave for 20 seconds. Counting down. Oh, I can hear it. Make sure it's not too hot to handle. Just let that cool off a little bit. Now let's get to smashing and see if this worked. Just gotta get through these outer layers, but I can already tell the garlic's already falling out of the peel. Yes! worked. The outside of the garlic is more pliable and less flaky, making it easier to clean up. The cloves do pop out pretty easily and the skin doesn't stick to them. But what you'll find by doing this is the individual garlic cloves are a little bit softer. This method is good, not quite perfect. I think we can find a better solution. Let's try a different technique where all you need is a knife. Once these are cut in half, just turn them upside down. Now give each half a good smack. Ooh. Be kind of gentle here. This method didn't work for me at all. I've seen videos where people have had success with this online, but it definitely didn't work for me. With this method, supposedly, the peel comes off of the garlic cloves individually, and see, the skin is still attached. It's supposed to come off easily. This is a trick that I know will work. For this method, set your garlic down on a paper towel or a flexible mat. I'm gonna smash it to get all those cloves out. This was a good head of garlic. Look how big these are. And those cloves, just go into a container. You only want the cloves, not that outside peel. Lid on and give it a good shake. It's a bit of an arm workout, but it's worth it. And look at that. All that skin comes right off and we're just left with cloves of garlic. Now we have our cloves of garlic. The peels pour right out of the jar. Everything on your paper towel can either go in the trash or into the compost. That easy. This is one of my favorite methods and now peeling isn't a problem. Now that we've got our garlic peeled, what sounds really good is some pasta. From pasta to curries, plastic food containers are so notorious for being hard to clean. Containers get stained and leave behind a greasy film. To fix this mess, we're gonna be testing out a viral trick that involves paper towel and dish soap. That's all you need. Just rip up a few pieces and put them in. Put your lid on top and we're gonna shake over a sink so you don't make a mess like I just did. Hmm. You'll need to do this for about a minute. Wanna make sure those paper towels don't go down the drain. And it didn't work. So this method obviously is not foolproof, but there's a couple other things you can do to help preserve your food containers. One thing you can try is soap and some baking soda to get those stains out. The soap helps cut through that grease and the baking soda is mildly abrasive, which should help remove that stain. This may take a little bit of elbow grease. Baking soda does go a long way in getting it clean, but you'll still have some residual stain if it's really set in there. To help prevent those stains in the first place before they even happen, try some cooking spray inside your container before you add your leftovers. 
Stain containers might be inevitable, but with a little bit of elbow grease and some prevention, you can keep these containers looking like new. You probably have a pasta spoon like this at home, but do you know what this hole is really for? A pasta spoon like this has a hidden feature. Pasta spoons with a large hole can be used to measure one serving of pasta. This will give you enough for one serving. So however many servings you need, just measure them through there, just like that. And now for its traditional use to stir the pasta. And of course, this is to portion your long pastas like spaghetti or fettuccine. Now that's the perfect portion. When it comes to straining your pasta, there's two kinds of people, lid people and colander people. If you're using a colander, there's a better way than just setting it in your sink. You may have seen a viral trend that makes straining easier and nope, that's not it. It's as simple as just putting the strainer on top instead of pouring the pasta into the sink. Just like that. I mean, honestly, that's so easy. Just one little change to take all the strain out of making pasta. I've got all these snacks and only one clip. Which one deserves it? These may be helpful, but honestly, you don't need them. You have everything you need right here. The internet is full of tricks to seal snack bags without the need of a clip. This is one of the more silly ones, so let's give it a try. This involves cutting a section out of the chip bag, and then the tip says to tie these two ends together. This tip definitely gets points for creativity and it actually works, but it still requires scissors. I'm impressed, this worked way better than I thought. The most practical way is use one of many different viral folding techniques to seal the chip bag. This is the easiest method that I like to use. Get all the air out of the bag and you're gonna wanna fold a triangle. Then roll it the opposite direction. This will create a little flap that you'll tuck under, do the same thing on the other side. That creates a tight seal on your chip bag. This fold takes a little practice, but once you get it down, you'll be able to use it all the time. Just like that, sealed up, good to go. You may have seen the trend about folding a cereal box, let me show you. This is supposed to be a way that if this tab gets damaged, you can still close the top of the box. First, fold in all the sides at the top. Then press in these sides, kind of like a milk carton. Then fold it back out, take one side out, and push it into the lip on the other side. This definitely works to keep the box closed, but there's something you should be doing to the bag inside. Use the same technique we did on our chips with our cereal. This fold technique works best when you grab the top, grab right at the base of where the cereal meets, fold it in. Then do the same thing on the other side. Just like the chip bag, roll it up and fold those tabs over to keep it sealed. This folding technique works so well. You may not even need the box. You can't trust everything you see on the internet, but sometimes these viral hacks actually work. Thanks for watching Problem Solve. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out some of our other videos like these two right here.